Hello and welcome to this special edition of Tech24 dedicated to animals, whether domestic or in the wild. From DNA analysis and IVF techniques to drones and acoustic sensors, we dig into all the ways in which technology can help curb poaching and preserve wildlife species. And in Test24, Dan and Jay Cattle Car will present us with a simple yet useful gadget to improve the well-being of our cats. A new technology helping farmers monitor lambs is the brainchild of entrepreneurs and researchers at the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture in Australia. The idea is simple, equip drones with visual sensors and infrared cameras to help them check on their livestock from a distance. Catherine Bennett tells us more. Technology is making people's lives easier, even in the most rustic of settings. On this sheep farm in Tasmania, Australia, farmers are using drones to scan their flocks from the sky. I think it's great. We'll always embrace new technology when it comes along. And, you know, I think the, the uses for something like that to go around and check your lambing use will be fantastic over time. The drones, given the nifty moniker of lambulances, have an infrared camera that can log thermal data about the animals. It means that if a ewe has mastitis, a bacterial infection of the udder, the camera could pick up where the infection is on a heat map. The ewe and the lamb have a heat signature, and what we're trying to do is relate that heat signature, signature to the likelihood of success for that animal staying alive. And the more animals that stay alive, the higher profit margins are for farmers. Lambs sell for around 150 Australian dollars each, but lamb mortality is high, costing farms thousands of dollars in lost revenue every year which makes the drones a wise investment. You don't have to save a lot of lambs to pay for the technology. The drones can even operate in rain and light snow, making them a potential lifesaver during lambing season. And our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattle Car, is here to tell us how technology is increasingly being used in wildlife conservation. And as you'll see, he has fascinating examples of what's being done throughout the world. Uh, hello and welcome, Dan. Let's start with the use of satellite imagery for whale conservation. Yes, Julia, scientists from the British Antarctic Survey and Cambridge University have used high-resolution images from uh, Digital Globe's Worldview 3 satellite to detect, to count, and even describe uh, certain whale species. Now, this use of satellite is considered to be a game changer because it will be possible to monitor whale populations uh, in remote and inaccessible regions. Secondly, the perhaps the biggest advantage is because of the satellite's wide range compared to the conventional methods of uh, monitoring populations. And third, by using satellites, it will be also possible to measure the trends in the way this population changes. So yes, these are uh, some of the advantages in using a satellite imagery. Now, I, I love this example coming up in Central America. Uh, scientists have created fake turtle eggs uh, to trace poaching routes. Tell us more about it. It is such an ingenious solution. Uh, this organization called Paso Pacifico, they came up with the solution of infiltrating uh, these, this particular uh, form of egg, which is GPS enabled, it is made of fiber, but it mimics the uh, eggs of sea turtles. Right. You know, this is poaching of sea turtle eggs is a big problem in uh, Central America. And in order to combat that, in order to trace the roots of uh, the, uh, the way these uh, eggs are shipped by poachers, uh, a scientist, an engineer, and a special effects artist, they came together and uh, developed this egg, which is embedded with GPS, and authorities then uh, put this egg in a real nest and it's, it's literally undiscovered because it's very difficult to distinguish it from other natural uh, real eggs. So as the nest is carried, the egg also is uh, taken by the poachers and that's how the, they are able to detect the roots and alert the authorities who can take further action. Now, attaching GPS-enabled collars is also a common method to track uh, animals, but a new sensor attached to these collars could, be, uh, could at least help combat poaching. Yes, it's called Wiper. It essentially is a wireless acoustic detector. Uh, what it does is it detects the ballistic shock waves of uh, a bullet. So the moment there's a shot and because... This is it, it right? Yes. Mm. The moment a shot is fired, uh, this particular device is able to detect, uh, first of all, that a shot is fired. And, and secondly, then map it, right? Because it is GPS enabled, mm -hmm. it is able to locate uh, uh, an approximate area where the shot is fired and the authorities can be alerted.
Now, also, there's a rhino species that's literally on the verge of, uh, of extinction, and that's the white rhino. Uh, scientists are planning to ensure the species doesn't go extinct. What, what's their, uh, their solution there? Well, the northern white, white rhino is really it's on the verge of extinction, as you say. In, in fact, it's desperate times for this species because there are only two animals left on this planet, and both of them are females. Now, in order to ensure that... Uh, the population of this particular species is increased. Scientists are thinking of using a couple of techniques. One is the IVF or in uh, vitro fertilization, in which they will be uh, taking eggs from the surviving females and they will combine it with the already taken frozen uh, sperms of males and they will be creating an embryo and implant them in a rhino of a close subspecies like the southern white rhino, which uh, just to just for the information is not an endangered species that's one way and the second way is to make use of the recent advances in stem cell techniques so just by using a skin sample you can create stem cells and through more manipulation you can create this so called induced pluripotent stem cells which can then be uh, turned into an egg and again they can use the uh, previously taken frozen embryo uh, frozen sperm and create an embryo and implant it in uh, other females. So these are the two techniques, and hopefully they work because just imagine these are the last two animals of a species on, the planet. on our planet. Thank you, Dan. Now, another incredible initiative that aims to save elephants in Kenya is Temboma, a system of integrated networks involving local and global communities united for one goal, to predict and prevent a poacher's next strike. And the architect of this project is an incredible woman. Lieutenant Colonel Fel Cuevas spent years serving as a counterterrorism intelligence expert in the U.S. Air Force, learning everything there is to know about collecting intelligence on the ground. But one day in 2015, she chose to make the leap to conservation, realizing she could use her skills in data collection to help stop the decimation of elephants. Well, earlier we spoke to Lieutenant Colonel Cuevas and asked her how exactly she's applying counterterrorism techniques to anti-poaching efforts. Let's take a listen. Temboma is a wildlife security initiative that takes much of its design from a special operations model, which may not seem immediately apparent to why. Um, but that is my background. And when I was first introduced to the challenge of poaching, um, I saw it to be very much a networked problem, much like uh, insurgent and terror groups are networked adversaries. So it, as we designed Tenboma, um, really the focus for us was to be able to build a network of partnerships and people that could, that was placed to defeat the adversary network of poachers and traffickers. And to do this, we use a mix of uh, human, again, human partnerships and, and um, uh, other collaborations. And we mix that with a blend of technologies that range from the very simple all the way up to the very sophisticated. And just to give an example, uh, we had a community informant in, in Tenboma, that's where we focus, is to work with in, uh, with indigenous communities and conservancies that are near uh, conservation areas or protected areas like uh, national parks or uh, wildlife reserves. We work with them to, and that's where the network starts. In this case, we had a community informant that through just a very simple SMS uh, messaging system that we have set up, alerted us that three poachers were traveling with ivory from the location nearby where the community informant was to another location in Kenya. We worked with our Kenya Wildlife Service counterpart in the local area um, and connected with Kenya Wildlife Service representatives who are part of our Tenboma team in the area that the, inf that the informant had alert alerted us that the poachers were intending to travel to. We can work with them now using more sophisticated technologies that range from uh, digital forensic extraction tools to uh, network analytics software. Um, when we worked with that KWS team, they they did in fact have corroborating information uh, that which corroborated what the informant had reported to us, uh, and we were able, so they were able to that same day make the arrest of the three poachers uh, who had, as the informant reported, had ivory, and then they were able to use those now more sophisticated technologies to identify the intended buyer of that ivory in another location in Kenya. 
And three days later, they, erect, they affected the arrest of an Italian national based on the, the analysis that they were able to do with, uh, with the software, again, which started with that community informants tip. Moving on now to Test24. The Cat's Pad is the first smart feeder and water fountain that helps your cats stay healthy. And the beauty of it is that you can manage everything through an app. Dan, thank you so much for this fake cat that we have here <laughs> on the set of Tech24. We were talking earlier about yeah, uh, it's fake... not inappropriate. To exactly. Have a we we're fake talking cat about fake today. turtle yeah. eggs. Well, here you go. Now we have a fake cat. Tell us more about this gadget. Well, the dedicated application, as you mentioned, it uh, allows you to program and schedule. Uh, several small meals uh, throughout uh, a day. Now, apparently one of the problems for domestic cats in uh, all over the world is obesity. Mm -hmm. So in Europe, uh, four out of 10 cats uh, suffer from obesity. So this is a great way of combating it as you can regulate the amount of food uh, that your cat consumes. So how does it work precisely? Well, this device comes equipped with uh, RFID antenna. And as you can see here, your cat will also be uh, getting a collar right. with, uh, with a RFI, chip. yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. with a RFID chip. So the moment the cat approaches uh, the device, the dispenser and the water fountain can get activated. So there are two modes. One is the on-demand mode, and the other mode is the planned mode. So either you can plan these meals or you can feed the cat as it approaches the machine. And so you can use this if you decide to go on vacation to feed your cat while you're gone. Thank you so much for that, Dan. That brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech24. But you can watch it again on our website, france24.com. See you next time.